Hey everybody, I'm back to work on the 1997 Dodge Ram 1-ton four-wheel drive duality pickup. Uh, today I'm going to do the uh, upper and lower ball joints on the passenger side. So, let me uh, get you a tight shot here and show you uh, symptoms that indicate that the ball joints need replacement. And then, uh, probably going to do kind of a condensed version on this here because I just did the wheel hub on the other side. Um, that video probably uh, has been up a few weeks now. So, if you want to see how to remove the, uh, the wheel hub, which I'm going to end up doing here to do this job, uh, a lot of the disassembly. I'm going to jump ahead and skip that because I already covered that basically in the, uh, the wheel hub replacement video. So you can look that up if you, uh, if you need to figure out how to do that. Now it's kind of windy out here so I'm going to have to deal with the wind up on the microphone. But, um, I had explained this previously on the wheel bearing video, the wheel hub video, about how you can tell the difference. Um, basically with a wheel bearing you're going to have slop when you jack the, uh, when you jack the truck up pull the wheel this way you're gonna get slop in that direction and then also in this direction with the ball joints what you end up with is so I don't know if you can hear that but there's a clicking thunking kind of more of a thunk noise right there that isn't evident at all this way so you're only gonna play this way so it's gonna be the ball joints could be either the upper or the lower or both. The only way to tell which, if either or both are bad, is to actually watch the, the joint as you're moving it, which is kind of difficult to do without an assistant. First thing I got to do is take this extension off. And that's on there because this is a one ton truck. So after I remove this extension, I remove the uh, brake caliper. Now, uh, I didn't completely remove it, I just unbolted it, left the lines all hooked up, and moved it up out of the way. I tied it up with a piece of wire. You can use uh, heavy duty zip ties or whatever, just to keep it up out of the way. Because you don't want to just prop it up and if it accidentally falls off, and if the heavy weight of the caliper will uh, damage your brake line, and then you're going to have a whole other job you didn't plan on doing. Uh, that being said, <laughs> this is obviously the opportune time to. Uh, replace your pads if needed and also the rotor because as I showed in my last video to change the rotor you've got to pull the whole hub so you really want to be looking at a lot of stuff in here when you're in here uh, you know if you're going to be doing your brakes and your rotors need to be done that's the time to do it if you need pads my brakes I didn't do that long ago so they're in good shape so I'm not going to have to do that um, also with the uh, rotor completely uh, with the um, not the rotor with the caliper completely removed uh, just give your give your wheel a, your rotor a spin here and listen you can listen you can hear if you hear anything really bad sounding uh, as far as the wheel hub bearing assembly uh, then that's going to be the time to replace that would be now also any clinking or clacking you had on this side you're going to be looking at that universal joint there on the on the axle the axle joint and then uh, if all that checks out well, like in my case here, it looks like all I really need to worry about is is the uh, the ball joint, and that ball joint, it, that lower one is bad. It's really sloppy. So, all right, all right. So I've got my uh, hub assembly off. So now, at this point. I believe the next thing that's supposed to happen is you're supposed to remove the axle. So if I grab onto this right here, I can actually pull this whole axle with the uh, universal knuckle here and the whole shaft right out of the axle. It'll actually un it'll come out of the differential up there and out of the uh, seal that's up there. And I can pull this whole assembly out if I wanted to work on it. And that also gives me ample access here. Now, the danger of doing that, I think, I may be completely wrong on this, but I think there's a possibility of damaging the seal. 
and the seal is way in there where the axle tube goes up to and meets the differential, the front differential. So I don't want the nightmare scenario of damaging that front differential seal. There is no evidence of it currently leaking, so uh, I've got a good one in there. So what I want to see if I can do, and I don't even know if this is possible, but I'm going to try it. I'm going to see whether or not I can actually drop this whole knuckle, or whatever they call this assembly right here, whether or not I can drop this whole assembly out and swing it away and out to get to the ball joints with the ball joint press without actually having to pull this. Okay? I think, I'm not positive, but I think there's going to be enough room to allow this. What happens is you got to take off this nut here and the nut down there for the lower, lower ball stud. And these two will actually push out and down and allow this whole thing to come down and out. Well, this has got a swivel to it, so it should be able to do that. I might not even have to undo this. Um, and I've got this wire right here that goes to the sensor uh, for the anti-lock brake system and on newer models I guess that anti-lock brake sensor is an integral part of the uh, the actual wheel hub that I took off but on this older one here the actual wheel that goes by that sensor is actually behind this dust shield um, on the axle itself so that cable got quite a bit of slack in it. So I might be able to just put a block of wood underneath here and lower this right down on it. So I'm gonna first kettle of fish is I gotta get this ancient rusty cotter pin out of this castle nut right here for the top one. The bottom one doesn't even look like it's got a castle nut or anything on it. I'm kinda interested to see what the heck's holding that on. Well, as is often the case, the uh, cotter pin just broke off. So I used a punch, tried to punch it out. It didn't want to come out, but I think I broke off enough of it so that I should be able to actually get the uh, nut to turn right past it and shear the severely rotted cotter pin off as it turns. But cotter pin's not the problem currently. It's just the fact that this is just really rusted on there. Before I break out the oxyacetylene, I am going to try one more thing, which is I'm going to try my impact driver to see whether or not that would uh, suffice. There's so much rust on there that I can't quite get the socket to go all the way on. So, some hearing protection. Fire up this impact driver and see what happens. I just tried this breaker bar on there and it was bending pretty badly and uh, I had one of these I picked up at the flea market that had snapped. Uh, it's the Harbor Freight deal. So I wasn't going to push this too far. I don't want to snap another one. That's going to work. I'm not going to take the nut off any further than that because I might want to... Uh, uh, let's see. I guess I got to get a hammer and bang on here and uh, you can probably get my uh, pickle fork actually I think before I do anything else I'll take a stab at seeing uh, whether or not I'm gonna be able to loosen that lower one that lower nuts gonna be a real pill all right so I uh, can't get a uh, socket on there because of the axle being there but I can get my combination wrench on there. This is an inch and sixteenth, I think. So the question is, is this gonna budge, or is it gonna be no non-starter? Oh, ouch! Uh, let's see. Let me turn the wheel all the way to the right. Oh, I have doubts 
about that. It turned. That worked. That's one rusty nut. That's gonna be the name of my bar if I open one. The rusty nut. Although I guess that could be misconstrued, huh? Maybe that's not such a good idea. Never mind. Wow, that one's still that one's still gonna need some horsepower. Guess I gotta get something underneath here. In case it drops out suddenly. Although, because I left the axle in there, that would probably kind of stop it, but let's not, let's not rely on that. Oh, it's clouding up. Oh, let's see if we can't get this thing to separate before it starts raining. I've come to the conclusion that my pickle fork is too narrow here for this lower ball joint. I need a bigger one. Alright, so when I was out here yesterday working on this, I believe the problem I was having was that the, uh, the pickle fork that I have here is too narrow right here. So what's happening is when I try and get this in there to get some wedging action, since the ball stem can't get through into here, this wedge part's really not doing anything. So. I went to my local Napa and I borrowed this tool. This is a uh, pickle fork set, they call it. And I'm looking in here and I got three different sizes here. And there's actually a guide here that tells you what these are supposed to be for. So it actually says A is the ball joint separator, B is a pitman, pitman arm wedge, and uh, C is the tie rod separator. So this long one here, which is like what I've got, is the tie rod separator and then this one here I believe this is A so they call in this the ball joint separator but then they're also then they call in this one here the tie rod separator but I was just looking at the gap and I noticed that that's even wider so the ball joint separator if I hold it up side by side it's not much wider than what I've got now. Matter of fact, barely any wider. So, I don't know, I'm tempted to, uh, that's mine. I'm tempted to see whether or not I should use this one. rubber piece off it. There's no way that's wide enough. In fact, neither is that. Well, I just got back from the auto parts store. We measured the uh, slot on that uh, largest pickle fork and it was one inch and we took out a brand new ball joint off the shelf and measured that and it is over one inch. So there's no way that you're going to be able to use that size pickle fork on there. So I ran over to a uh, garage where I know a mechanic over there and uh, I asked him if I could borrow one and he said, he said, listen to me closely. 
because he wanted to. He says, "See, that's what he opened with. Listen to me closely, because he wanted to impress upon me the fact that he never ever uses a pickle fork to take these out." He said, "He has pickle forks that are still brand new, never used." He said, "He just bashes on that point on the knuckle there where the ball stud." goes through and he said if you bash on it and bash on it eventually it will just pop right out that's what he said so I got no choice but to bash on it and bash on it and hope that that does work I asked him I said do you ever put heat to it oxycetylene heat nope bash on it and he pointed on a vehicle pointed out exactly where to hit I'll point it out on this upper one because it's a lot easier to see but basically right here on the side where this stud is going through that's where you're gonna bash on it but I gotta do it under there where you can't even see it without getting down on the ground That was it. He was right. Just gonna hit it right in the right spot. Boy, I feel dumb. My assumption that I might be able to get this knuckle out and still leave the axle in there was completely wrong. By now, I'm sure several viewers have realized that. Probably as soon as I said it, they said, nah, I don't think you can do that. Or, nah, you can't do that, it won't happen. Alright, so what I gotta do now is I gotta turn the wheel of straightness out, pull out that assembly.